before I answer questions here? Was the, the punt block the big turning point in the game? It seemed like uh, it, it, you know, in hindsight, I think it was at the time it, it was, but only probably for uh, you know two minutes because they scored shortly thereafter. But uh, you know, there's a very effective stat that says you win 85 percent of the games in which you block a punt, and uh, you know we took care of the ball today, blocked the punt. But I, I think that was a big piece of the momentum, um, and uh, unfortunately they answered with a, a score, but then so did our offense. But just, the, I mean, just for that play to get you guys up two scores and have them kind of catch up. That was good. Anytime play. you can score without your offense going on the field, obviously it's it's it's, it's nice. But um, you know, we didn't even have to try and pound it in. We were able to, to pick it up in stride. So that was a big play. If you if you want to boil the, the game down to one play, um, that's probably as pivotal as any. Your running game, uh, your offensive line just dominated up front. And, I mean, they, they can stop you guys on the ground. Yeah, you know, and they, and they have obviously a very good defense. I mean, we're facing a defense that only allowed 9.4 uh, points per game, which is astounding, and 94 yards rushing. And whatever you want to say, uh, immovable object, unstoppable force. I mean, something was you had to give today. And, you know, we came here uh, to the school two years ago, and when we got here, we built. We said we we're going to build this program around mental toughness, and that was going to emanate out from the offensive line. So you guys obviously chose not to pick any of those guys, which is fine. These guys get the glory, but we know our toughness on, on all three phases of the game uh, develops in our offensive line, and you saw that today. Coach, do you uh, expect uh, the defense to play well enough to hold them to 21 points? Yes, I did. I uh, did not expect that all 21 were going to come in the first half, nor were we happy with that. But, uh, you know, we did pitch a shutout in the second half, and that was tremendous. Um, you know, they, we knew there was going to be an adjustment period because their tempo was a tempo that we hadn't seen before. It was exceptional. We saw no huddle offenses, but this was a, a, a very different animal. Uh, they averaged 86.7 yards uh, plays per game. 87 plays per game, that's astounding. And uh, the tempo is probably what got us off early. Unfortunately, we, we got ourselves in the hole. Uh, with two penalties that kept drives going. And then uh, they converted a third and 20. They threw a 10-yard hitch. We missed the tackle. That was very poor on our part. But uh, 21 points is about what I expected. But if in the fashion they came, I did not expect it. How many linebackers were you rotating in now? Uh, well, we, we have four in our traditional set. And we were playing with six, so an extra inside, an extra outside. That wasn't the huge rotation. The big rotation for us to stay fresh, guys running on and off with it was D-line. We were rolling every three plays because we thought we had to keep up with their tempo, and it seemed to work out pretty well today. Do you credit this shutout in the second half to any halftime adjustments, or? Yeah, and there were some there were some schematic adjustments for sure. Uh, coverage, we weren't uh, you know we weren't getting on top of the receivers like we needed to, obviously. That ball on us. Um, but they were also doing some good mid-range stuff that kind of kept us off balance. So I think our defensive coaches did a fantastic job with the adjustments. But it was more so um, we were prepared for having to make adjustments throughout the week. So we came in with a set game plan and said, OK, these are two ways this game could go. If it goes this way, be prepared for this in the second half. If it goes this way, be prepared for this. And uh, we ended up, uh, I think, doing a decent job. Fritz, can you tell us about uh, the bubble screen play you guys run and uh, the kickoff return? Um, the bubbles, I mean, I got to credit the other outside running, or wide receiver who just did a great job uh, blocking. I mean, we just, it's part of the offense. It keeps everyone in balance. And little little pass plays help the run game, and the run game helps the pass plays. So. And then the kickoff return is, I mean, it's, I, mean, I guess I, it, I look good on it, but a lot of it's just blocking. I mean, our, our outbacks and everyone just does a great job setting the hole, and I just kind of got to find it. And, so yeah, that's about it. Brian, tell us about trying to keep up with that defense and, or the Monmouth offense and what you guys were doing out there. Yeah, pretty incredible offense they got there. <laughs> you know, like Coach said, we kind of just had to get settled in there. It took us a little while in the first half there. It got beat deep a few times there, but once we settled in and kind of showed who we are in that second half, it was we were able to shut them off there. Do you feel like once you got that first three and out in the second half, that you know, <coughs> just kept building for you guys out there? Yeah, we talked about that at halftime, how big that uh, first second half drive would be. And, uh, we were able to kind of, kind of work out that whole momentum, so that helped a lot. Ben, tell us about the holes that you were running through today. They were big. <laughs> <laughs> they were big. You know, it's not like I, 
I wouldn't say that I did that much today. You know, my job is kind of make the secondary miss. I didn't do that too well, but it was fantastic. Five linemen up front and Trevor Flat and my fullback just blocking ISO on those inside linebackers all day was huge. And my wide outs blocking outside. You know, it's a total team concept and effort of just pounding the ball and we need everyone to do it. This would be open to anybody. In terms of your conference and, and what you saw today from Mountain College, where would you place them in your conference? Yeah, no, I don't even really want to touch that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was asked. It's uh, they, They're a very good football team regardless of where they play. And uh, you don't, you can go 10-0 and 0, um, in a lot of conferences and still uh, not be a tremendous team in the nation. But they're a tremendous team nationally because of the way they've won their games. Five shutouts the last two years, uh, six more games holding their opponents in single. Dominance that they have is impressive. So uh, you could put them in our league, and, and you know, I, it's tough because you can't just say based on one game. They would have to face different speeds and different size guys throughout the entire year. So to put a number on it, I really can't say that. But I think they're a good team no matter where you play. Put them. Pritchie scored on kind of a broken play on that uh, on touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of walk us through that and, and how, how far around you had to run to finally uh, get free? <laughs> well, I, I just kind of dragged him on the backside and just kept going. And our quarterback, Dakota, just kind of rolled out and just tried to find the opening. He does a great job finding me. He threw a perfect ball and just made the catch. It looked like you got both feet in, too. Yeah, I got, I got both feet <laughs> in. <right. laughs> so. It looks like. You know, late in the game, or at least in the fourth quarter, the Co was beating St. John's. Uh, I don't, has anybody heard an update? We, we got to find Co them. Co won 34-27. So <coughs> you're going to host the playoff game next week? Is that the? Yep. Is that yep. We'll be hosting uh, round two, which will be. Uh, you know, this is only the second NCAA appearance for the school in the history of the school, so uh, we're pretty proud. But it's the first ever home game uh, that the school will ever host as well. So we'll be at home next Saturday. Any disappointment in not facing your kind of arch rival? You know, we worry about the things we can control. You know, I mean that. And uh, if if the gift would have been wrapped in a big red and white bow, we would have welcomed that. But that's not uh, of our volition. So we're worried about uh, the team we got coming. And obviously, based on today, it's a better team than that one anyway. So um, I, I know this team. I know of this team. We're going to be playing, and uh, we don't care. It's pretty exciting, you know. It's been so long, and um, all the effort we put in through the off season, through the season, to see it pay off, it's just great. Yeah, it's just it's huge, you know. Think of how far we've come from two years ago, two and eight, to now ten and one. It's just just an amazing turnaround. And just like I said before, a couple of times, you know, it's all those guys just buying in the team and the community buying in the team, and so we got tremendous support. So it's awesome. Um, for me, I came in, this is only my second year, I'm only a sophomore, so I didn't really get to experience the 2-8, and eight, but uh, I've just noticed coming on campus, like football is kind of the end thing now. I mean, I know back into Brian and Ben, before I got here, it was kind of kind of looked down, I don't, not looked down upon, but it wasn't one of the main things, and now I feel like we kind of have a good feel on campus, and people support us, and it's, it's great when people when you feel supported. Fourteen block your punt. Great question. Chris, um, Chris, seventeen, 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 and, and five. Tyler Respect to one. <coughs> he did the easy job. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, he just picked. He just picked. Bounce right. And mm -hmm. Seventeen's been uh, the explosive edge guy for us. We have several punt punts on him. He's a track guy too, so he's got real good kicking. Anything else? All right. Thanks, thanks so much. Congratulations. Congratulations.